But it's not just all sunshine and rainbows. My goodness, no. Um, as a matter of fact, sometimes working through the, the healing process, mentally, emotionally, physically, is hard and difficult and messy even on the best of days. But ultimately, it's worth it. And that's what I love to help people see and remember and to remind them of over and over and over again that it's worth it. It's worth it. I am Lisa Roars, former executive coach turned podcaster and digital course creator. Just a few years ago, my typically unwavering optimism was put to the test when my autoimmune system went sideways and handcuffed my dreams to positively impact the world. Fast forward though, through years of failed experiments, dozens of doctors and countless hours of research, and I am now a healthy, thriving CEO of a business that is positively impacting the world by empowering people to exchange fear for fortitude and dis-ease for durability. I created the Sunshine Cafe podcast to give you strategies to be your best self-advocate so you can focus on the things which light you up. If you're looking for hope and encouragement to live a life you love, then you're in the right place. Let's dive in. Hey, everybody. Hello and welcome to the Sunshine Cafe. I'm really excited about this particular episode because it's my opportunity to address you directly. Just you and me having a cup of coffee. <laughs> I felt like it was really important to do an introduction episode to kind of handle the litany of questions like, why? Why that? And why this? And why, th why that? And why 10 other things? So I want to cover today why I'm doing a podcast and kind of the quick journey that it took me to get to where I'm at today. Why me? Because, you know, maybe I am your person and maybe I'm not. And that's okay too. But you need to know a little bit more about who I am before you can make that decision. And I want to give you the information that you need to understand if maybe I'm your person or not. And why this podcast is needed at all. Kind of what we're going to cover and frankly, why you should care. So those are the items I want to cover today. So let's dive in. Why is this episode important? Well, I've got more than 26 years of experience working in corporate America with executives. And I know that it doesn't really matter what message you have. If you don't have trust from the people who are receiving that message, then it really doesn't matter how great your message is. It's never going to be effective. So I want you to understand who I am so you can choose whether or not this message is going to be important for you. Because if I'm going to do a podcast that's going to empower you to break free from fear and and exchange dis-ease for durability and strength, then yeah, you got to know who I am and what experiences I'm bringing to the table. You have to have the information you need to feel comfortable with me. Not everybody will be, and that's okay too. But you have a chance to decide if you trust me. And for those who I've known for years and who I've coached directly, they know me. They know the things that I've done for them, and they know that I will go the extra mile. I will take it to the nth level if necessary to help you and to be there for you so you can break free from whatever it is that's holding you back. At least that's my desire. That's my goal. I want this to be a podcast that will stand out for you in the sea of podcasts that are out there. I want this podcast to be kind of like a, a daily vitamin or a weekly vitamin at, at the minimum, a good supplement for your health and for your joyful living. Hopefully, I'll give you the information that you need to know whether that might be the case. So how did I get here anyway? <laughs> The journey to creating a podcast. Well, I was working in corporate America, going along in my everyday until I wasn't. I, like many others in these last few years, was one of those people that was laid off this last summer. And of course, at first it was a big shock and it was, you know, kind of went through the whole level of emotions of 
you know, angry and then scared and then frustrated and then, you know, all the litany of things that come through on an emotional level. But I decided to look at it as an opportunity to make it the best summer ever. So my son and I planned all kinds of different things to do to make the summer really fun. Trips or adventures or bike rides or whatever it might be. And on one of the days when I was checking email, I got signed up for a podcasting class, which I thought, you know, I had wanted to do a podcast for years, um, but never really found the time while I was inside my corporate world. Uh, it was just there was always so much work to do. I didn't have time to create another thing. So it was a nice opportunity to dive into what podcasting might be about. So I signed up for that course and it changed my life. I was on fire. I was so excited to do this podcasting thing and and seek after my joy and be an encourager to so many more than I can reach just in my little circle. So I was doing all of the assignments and then I got a phone call from my mom's facility and they told me I better come over because she was declining quickly. And that wasn't a super big surprise to me because my mom had been in a long-term care facility for quite some time. She had been struggling with MS, multiple sclerosis, for 50 years. So this was my life. I was very familiar with all the things about her health. I was I always joked with the doctors that I was her external hard drive. So whatever memories she couldn't quite retain, I was there to be the memory for her. So I lived that life with her for a long time, ever since I was a little girl. So I, I understood what they were saying when they said she was declining. But it was a little bit of a surprise because mom had just, she just has been through so much. She's kind of had beaten death so many different times that I, I thought for sure she'll pull out of it. This would have been the fourth time she had sepsis. Anyway, I went, I was there with her, and in the next day she did pass. So the whole idea about me spinning up a podcast that was all about encouragement felt very poorly timed. I needed to put the brakes on that and take a take a pause. And I did. I paused for a couple of months to take care of things with mom, uh, take care of her estate and the things that needed to be handled and put her to rest and decided after much thought and after much prayer that I'm going to do this podcast for and in honor of her because she was such an encourager, always an encourager, and always content that it seemed appropriate to do a podcast for mom. Good grief. All right, so I made a decision. I was going to do this for her and in her honor. And I went through a lot of learning. Oh my goodness, and a ton of mistakes, which I continue to make a ton of mistakes. I have decided I'm very good at making mistakes, but I'm also getting better at, at not making some mistakes and learning about how to do this thing and all the technology and the stuff that goes along with it. And I'm not going to dive into like 18 minutes of thank yous, although I probably could, but there are a few people I just want to throw out there. So I'm going to try to do this in like seven seconds. <laughs> so. Um, thank you to Nicole and Amy, Suzanne and Debbie and Johnny and Davey and Jeannie Marie and Samantha and Chi, Aaron, Leslie, Chris, Brooke, Michelle, Rachel, Amy Porterfield, Kathy Heller, Kristen, Linda, and so many others. You all know who you are. Um, I just wanted to call out your names in particular to say thank you. And so here we are today. It's my birthday. Happy birthday to me giving myself a podcast for my birthday and in honor of mom because mom gave me birth and made my life possible. And so we're launching a podcast today. We, me and God, launching a podcast today. <laughs> so why, why me? You need to know whether or not I'm your person. Maybe I'm not your person. You know, that's a reason we don't all date the same people and we don't all choose the same jobs because we all like different things, and I might not be your person, but you do need to know one thing for sure, and you might have caught this already in some of my story, but I am a Christian, and everything I do here, 
on this podcast will in one way, shape or form be filtered through my desire, my deep desire, my sincere desire to honor Jesus and to do nothing that will grieve God or the Holy Spirit. But I also want to say that Christian, the word Christian um, has, has been thrown about and used in a lot of negative ways. Even Bible believing has been kind of used in a confusing way. So to just be really clear, I want you to know that I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, who died for my many sins and took the penalty for me and what, what penalty I should have paid. He took so that I could be made right with God. He died for those sins of mine. And then he rose again three days later. And he is right now seated at the right hand of God. And as a Christ follower, I attempt to be like Christ, a Christian trying to be like Christ. And I'm failing constantly just, just to just acknowledge that. But the only competition here is with myself. But maybe it's kind of like golf. The only game I'm trying to improve is my own. So I have no judgment on other people. I have lots of friends who are not Christians and don't choose to try to follow Christ. And I have lots of friends who feel following Christ is different than how I feel it is. But I believe firmly that Christ gave me an example for how to live. And he put his life manual into his word called the Bible. And so the things that I do should be consistent with that from my own, from a judging of my own self. So that's me. I'm a Christian. I'm also a wife. I have an amazing husband who is my best friend and biggest encourager. I'm also really blessed to be a mom. My husband and I have a brilliant and talented young man. No bias there, of course. <laughs> and um, in, the, in the realm of spiritual gifts, I'm an encourager. Lots of my friends will tell you that. I am always the one stepping in to try to encourage somebody out of the, the pit or to help them see light at the end of the tunnel. But it's not just all sunshine and rainbows either. My goodness, no. Um, as a matter of fact, sometimes working through the, the healing process, mentally, emotionally, physically, is hard and difficult and messy even on the best of days. But ultimately, it's worth it. And that's what I love to help people see and remember and to remind them of over and over and over again that it's worth it. It's worth it. I am far, far, far from perfect. I make a lot of mistakes and I will continue to make a lot of mistakes. But I've also been through a lot. Whatever you might know about me, uh, I don't tend to, to go on camera when I'm in my low moments, but I certainly have them. Most recently, I've had some really difficult healing concerns. Um, six years ago, I woke up and could barely move. My autoimmune system had kind of gone haywire. And when I woke up and I couldn't move, there was this inflammation in the back of my neck that then started moving down the back of my body and eventually got to the point where I couldn't even walk. I went through so many doctors and so many research papers and listened to so many case studies and finally found the things that I needed to, to heal. And it's, it's really given me a new perspective on what life is. Because it really doesn't matter how well you're performing in a corporate environment or how much money you're making at whatever job you have in this life. It doesn't matter at all. If you're in so much pain, you can't walk across the room. It doesn't matter what possessions you have. If you're so sick that you spend most of your day or most of your week in bed, that is not a life. And these days, there's just so much confusing information around healing. I want to be a voice. I want to share stories of things that actually did work. Everybody's different. Everybody's healing journey is different. But I want to share with you what worked for me and what's worked for so many other people so you can decide which ones of those things might work for you. So we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to, in January, we're going to have a, a whole 
theme on healing and I have some amazing guests who are going to be on to talk about healing. Um, and, but not just physically. We'll talk a, about a bunch of different things around healing because healing is more than just your physical fitness and it's more than diet. Healing means diving into relationships in your areas of your life where you've not chosen to forgive, how faith is participating in your life. My, my parents divorced when I was very, very young. I didn't have a dad in my life all growing up. And the relationship I did have with my dad was very strained. I never called him dad. And we're going to talk later about this as well, but he and I were able to reconcile. Oh, goodness. 15 plus years ago now, he and I were able to reconcile and I was able to be at his bedside when he passed away. I have such a peace about my relationship with my dad. And that, again, is something that you just can't put a price on that. So we're going to talk about relationships as well and how that plays into our healing. I'm also going to talk about how faith and gratitude and forgiveness make healing possible and give us joy on the journey. In addition to all of the podcasting things that I love to do, music is high on my list of things that bring me joy. I am honored and humbled to be able to sing with an amazing group of ladies, a Southern Gospel group called Sweetwater Revival. I have another solo CD out of my own music, which is all original, which is just such a joy to be able to do that. And music has been shown scientifically to help the healing process. It helps depression. It helps turn around our mental, emotional states. And I've just always thought that music kind of picks up where words leave off. So we'll talk about joy and how that plays into the healing journey as well. So physical diet, environment, we'll talk about what goes in, what goes on, and how that affects our health. We'll talk about the spiritual and our faith walk, our position and our the honorable position that we have as human beings in God's design. We'll talk about relationships and forgiveness, and we'll talk about pursuing joy. So why is this podcast needed? Let's talk about that for a moment. Everyone can feel that there is a palpable negative energy surrounding us right now. For those of us in the Christian realm, we understand that that is spiritual warfare happening all around us. And that's what I believe it is. And I don't know what's going to happen or when. I don't need to worry about it. I don't have anxiety about it because my God knows exactly what's happening and he's in control still. But we all feel this very negative energy and it's harder and harder to find places where you can find positive stories. It's really hard to find stories that are uplifting and family friendly where you're not going to hear a bunch of foul language and things that are going to drag you down or drag the little ones down in the background who are listening with you. So I want to make sure that you are given ideas and topics to think about, but I also want to give you tools that you can use on your journey for healing. And I want this to feel like a really safe space where you can have little ones listening and never worry about it being a problem. This particular podcast is needed because there are a lot of us who are healing, myself included. Although I am healthy and strong, stronger and healthier than I've maybe ever been, being healthy is a daily decision. And so I need you. I need you for accountability. And you, if you're dealing with some sickness or health concern, you need accountability and you need a community where people can come around you and encourage you where you have permission to feel vulnerable and permission to seek and research and connect and learn and grow and experiment and try something and talk with people about what worked and what didn't work. You have permission to heal and to start believing that that's possible from an, an emotional perspective or from a physical perspective. This is a place where you can do those things. This is the Sunshine Cafe where you are welcome. And it's warm and cozy. And you can have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. And you can just communicate with friends and share some stories and learn. You need to be part of something that's going to encourage you. And if this podcast isn't it, I hope you'll find something else. Healing is slow. And as you're letting your body heal, you need to keep pouring positivity back into yourself. You know, on my journey, 
one of the things that I did when I was exploring what was wrong with my body, I spent three very long days at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And one of the things that struck me so profoundly was just how full and busy those hallways were. There were people on every floor in this enormous complex, doctors left and right, and I had 18 appointments in three days. The place was very well run, a very well-oiled machine. But what struck me is nobody looked sick. Nobody looks sick until you're so sick that it's almost too late. I don't want it to get to be too late for you. Let's make a change. Let's take a different path. Let's do something radical and give our bodies what we need, our minds and our spirits, what we need to live our best life. That's the big picture. So that is the big picture. A couple key takeaways I want you to remember here, so I'll summarize them for you. One, it doesn't matter how good you are at your job or what possessions you have if you're so sick that most of your day is spent in bed. That's not life. Being healthy is a daily decision. Nobody looks sick until it's nearly too late. So make better decisions little by little every day. Number two, I may or may not be your person. Not everyone is your person, and that's okay. The important thing is that you get what you need to heal and be healthy. But if you are dealing with some sickness or a health concern, you will need accountability to make change. So find something that you can be part of that will encourage you. And if this podcast isn't it, well, I hope you'll find something else that will be. Healing is a slow process. And while you're healing, you need to keep pouring positivity back into yourself. Number three, complete health usually includes these seven things. Physical fitness, diet, mental, emotional, relational, spiritual, and environmental healing. Everybody's journey is different, but it will include all elements if you're going to have complete health. Number four, make mistakes. Get good at it. Enjoy the joy of making mistakes. Experimenting is the only way you're going to get better, and experimenting means you'll make some mistakes along the way. And number five, sometimes working through the healing process mentally and emotionally, physically is hard, difficult, and messy even on the best of days. But ultimately remember, it's worth it. It's so worth it to feel lively and energetic and healthful. All right, if you enjoy the show, please share it with your friends and take a quick moment to write a review. As a newly launched podcast, those reviews really help me know what I'm doing well and help others know that the content is valuable and helpful. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. The links are here in the show notes. And check out my website. In January, I'll be launching a course called Fast, Pray, Heal. And together, we're going to explore how this ancient tool has helped to ignite healing for thousands and thousands of years. It can break strongholds like cravings, help you have a clearer mind to get rid of the mind fog, and it'll pivot you from fear to fortitude, disease to durable. So go to lisaroars.com for all the details and reserve your spot for the January class, which is sure to sell out quickly. lisaroars.com. And to close out today, I'm going to play a short piece from a song off my CD called The Big Picture. And that's what it's about. The whole big picture, living your best life, but keeping the whole big picture in mind. Enjoy, and thanks for listening. You're right.